Man. Man, that does not sound good. No, I'm reading the blackouts in New York and Oh no, thing. have you heard? It's not yeah. weather unless it's man-made. The e wackos have already come out of the woodwork to say, yes, this disaster This disaster was brought to you by climate change. Because they haven't met a disaster they don't want to claim credit for. Um. So we have lots of Apple news, actually. Yeah, I noticed that. It's an Apple-tastic day. So is Bob and everybody else with their commies and viewers? Uh, Kami's on right now. Let's see. Uh, are we doing the show? That looks like we probably are. Although I, okay. Oh, thank you so much, Sean. Did you hear about crossover? It's great for today. It's Halloween now. It's not Halloween yet. Yes, it is. Yes, it it's is. For you, it is. Well, it's midnight uh, G negative five GMT, and it's uh, twelve yeah. twenty negative five GMT. I know we have to have a yeah. Halloween's my one of my biggest days. Oh, well, here's my youngest thing. What? What's that? How long is the free four? Huh? How long is the free four? Is it like a free month or a full free license? Uh, I think it's for a full for, uh, free license for crossover looking either for Lance or Matt for 24 hours. You get it for 24 hours. Well, there's a 24 hour redemption period. Yep. That's now. Yeah, boo boo. Yeah. You're kidding. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. He, he's a talker, too. What is he? <laughs> you know, it's a shame this probably isn't going to be up by the time... Oh, I, I guess i got to make a separate video and publish it tonight saying, Damn it, go get crossover. It's free. So what happened last week? Oh, no, nothing happened. We just forgot about you. <laughs> no, 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 what happened with... I don't know, I mean, what happened with the, the publisher of the show? Oh, I'm behind. I just am. Okay. Well, then there's no point in publishing it now because, I mean, the, politi the political shit is old. Yeah, I know. Well, I know I will, I'll publish the tech side, but not the political mm -hmm. side. I was so one week ago. Yeah. Now, it's all about Obama lost and what's his name won. <laughs> I told you Ronnie's going to win a long time ago. Yeah, I know. I'm still not convinced. Well, the thing of it is, is that um, beyond the polls, just so much of, of uh, what my friends say that are... Uh, well, and, and honestly, uh, given, yeah. you know, regardless of your personal feelings on the crap, if you look at all the... I mean, just look at the direction the advertisements have gone. Yeah. On the Obama side, I mean, for crying out loud, we have a last-second Michael. Yeah. yeah, we have a last-second Michael Moore video which says, "If Obama loses, the people will riot. It'll yeah, happen." I it was sick using kids to sing. If I mean, if I see a rebel, Republican dude, I'm gonna say the same thing. It is sick. They were like, "Oh, and the oil's in the sea and panda." I was like, "For real? This is sickness, man. This is just..." Come on, man. This is for real. Oh, the Republicans have done it, too. It, 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 I, I, the only thing I agree with is that this is the throw everything at the, at the fridge and see what stinks. Uh, and the reality is both sides have done that every time it gets to this point in an election. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but I mean, there's, there's not been any kids advertising from Romney. I'm trying to remember. There probably was. Well, no, but, the, but, mm -hmm. the, but, but be honest. Over the years, there have been plenty from the Republican oh, yeah, Party. Been. There's been some pretty bad uh, <laughs> stuff over the years, but you try, you, you, you hope that it can be, I don't know, for better taste. You learn the lessons. Oh, I've got to post a t shirt for you, uh, for both of you. <clears throat> what happened? Okay. What do you think of it? I don't party. I'm in the <laughs> Somehow it works. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm an independent president. 
Oh, really? Uh, yeah, well, there are third party candidates, but I don't think any of them are going to win. It's not worth it. It's, not, it's actually not worth it to do anything other than just stop the current direction, and then we can worry about Romney in four years and what we want to do. Yeah, I, 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 if the current I, direction has to be ceased. Well, my, my honest assessment, if Romney wins, he's a one-term president, and if Obama wins, he can't get reelected. Either way, we're going to have four more years of bullshit. <laughs> I don't think four years of bullshit. Like, when's the bullshit gonna end? I know we're eventually gonna get another bad, another president when we get more bullshit, you know? Uh, so, that's just too pessimistic. What? What? No, it's pragmatic. <laughs> it's me acknowledging that it's. The Senate, the Senate is already looking way better now. And if, uh, and if, if Disney acquired. Sorry? Did you hear about what Disney just acquired? Oh yes, that's in the show notes in case Bit's not looking at them. Yes, it's official. Star Wars is dead. Disney has acquired it and will be making a seventh movie. <laughs> as long as it's not Babylon 5 and 3. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, it, it, well, honestly, I would like to see the Babylon 5 story get continued considering there's a one million year Bible to work with. But not from Disney. <laughs> no, not from Disney. <laughs> Hey, Disney did make Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is not Star Wars. I, you know, I said it in the show notes, and my honest figuring on this is Star Wars was just jealous of Star Trek. Star Trek got to get reborn with a new movie and die. And Star Wars wanted to join that love, you know? it's They felt left out. We have a star in our name. Can't we be abused and have our franchise killed too? <laughs> I'm going to show notes now. Imagine if uh, Viacom bought it. Oh my! Oh god! It'd be like us over everywhere. <laughs> and that's the one we get for free at Halloween. Yeah, I'm talking about like Trevor Ferguson is like Darth Vader or something. You know? <laughs> but you ha tweet that, by the way. What? That crossover's free, just in case anybody doesn't know. Mm. Where's the link to the site? Um. I will. Is that Hold on. Link. Yeah. This what one. Is it from uh, Code Weavers. Yeah, hold on. I, I'm just gonna give you the link. It's on their. It's on their. It's on their homepage right now. I'm just gonna put it right in the show notes under what the fuck. Man, look real quick. Oh yeah, by the time you view this video, it was not free anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll make a secondary announcement on YouTube tonight because we haven't published anything for a while. Our followers deserve to know they can save eighty bucks or ninety bucks, whatever the hell it is now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a four-year. Well, they, they, they think he's cute on, on the internet. Or... Yeah, because the last time I got crossed over for free was in 08 when the gas prices went down. Yeah, I wonder if this is crossover lost another bet again. No, I didn't lose a bet actually. They just you just made a, de a declaration, and it's like if I uh, get a hundred thousand people to have uh, to pledge and vote, they said it they would. Uh, now, they now, were they asking them to pledge who they were going to vote for, or just to pledge to vote? Pledge to vote in general. Okay. But it's, the thing. it's an American election, but this said people from overseas can, uh, can pledge. And here's the thing they didn't get 100,000 pledges. They didn't get enough. They gave it for free anyway. So, whatever. You know, that's very depressing that you can't get 100,000 people on the planet to pledge to vote. Well, I didn't pledge because my vote doesn't matter. <laughs> that's a very depressing mentality, Kami. For sure. Uh, when the rest of the nation agrees with what I have to say about me having to vote for it, <laughs> then my vote matters. <laughs> well, that's called the silent majority, and it doesn't work that way, because when the silent majority is silent, the majority doesn't speak. Yes, but I'm a minority. I'm a silent minority. <laughs> <sighs> I'm, I'm going for a vocal majority, so it's better for me to be a silent minority to cheer the fuck up and just be like, not get in any discussions. <laughs> but does it depress you as much as it does me how many people just like have honestly taken the mentality I I surrender my vote and I won't vote at all I honestly don't know that many this election that are like that <laughs> uh, well I know at least four Kami's the fourth 
I mean, yeah, I don't, all right. Everybody, everybody, pretty much of the mindset stopped the current direction, and and everybody was uneasy about Romney. I think that um, they probably still are, but they just want to stop the current direction. And I think anything in I want the Brewsters. I, I really wanted the Brewsters. change, you know, for I guess for a certain ideology. I guess not, it's not how. Oh yeah, early. but I, I, I no. It, we're gonna have four more years of bullshit. I wanted the Brewsters million candidate. The none of the above. We have another four years of bullshit, but I will tell you, it's gonna, it's still gonna be tough for whatever. Um, the, the man, recovering this economy is gonna take more consumer incentive things than actual uh, quantitative easings and, um, I guess, arresting toxic assets. That's you need to make people feel confident. And once that happens, then. That's well, and, and, and that's um, a. That's not the job of the president, and b. I'm not sure the president has the power to do that uh, in this country. The president can certainly work in the legislation to affect payroll taxes. Absolutely, yeah, but it takes a while for that truly grow. You know what I mean? You have to find. It that. does take a while, but I can guarantee you, payroll taxes. Payroll taxes have a faster result than dynamic. Everything's dynamic, no matter what. I mean, even saving money is a dynamic. Ben, as somebody who's trying to figure out a way to create three jobs right now, I will tell you what would be the biggest incentive for creating jobs. Get rid of the bullshit. Do you know the bullshit you have to jump through to give somebody work? In well, you have to spend first to have the jobs. The company, that's the problem. The, 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 the companies right now, like, we've had three quantitative easings. And that's all come from the reverse side to say, oh, we're hoping you'd loan the money out and make liquidity. You're hoping, look, we just traded your toxic assets here for free money. And of course, that's cheap money. It's really, it really is just cheap money. And they're thinking because the idea is it's so cheap, we're going to hand it out and loan it out because the risk is less. But they're not. You know, the, the stock market is heavily, the stock market's in the 13,000s because that's where all the quantitative easing investments in buy. And they, and, and quite frankly, I'm not a person to say, well, Mr. Bank A, you know, screw you for not giving it to the, the you know, the small businesses or businesses that need loans, because they're looking up for rent, their interests, and they feel like investing in stock market is a better return than loaning the money out conventional. Right now, so, it right now it kind of is, and the so well, well, and, and, well, bit and bit, you're talking about restoring confidence. I mean, take all of that money out of the stock market. Where would it be? And reality is the stock market still hasn't recovered. It shouldn't really be there. Though. We shouldn't have done all these quantitative easings. No. I, even, I had major problems even with what Bush was doing. He first started with Fannie Mae. I was like, look, before the banks even, before they did the bank mergers and made good banks by the bad banks, they should have let the bad banks fail. The assets aren't going anywhere. It's like the, the, the myth that of it is is that, oh, all of a sudden a home loses its, 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 its bank backing. The home is still standing. It, it, it hasn't vaporized in thin air. Someone yes, it has. It's not on my computer screen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not on my computer screen, it doesn't exist. That's what the government told me. It's so stupid. If it's not on an iPad, it doesn't exist. Yes. <laughs> it's not on my iPad mini. It doesn't exist. I can't see it. It doesn't exist. It's not in my mini world. Yeah. It, so, this is my, if you affect payroll uh, taxes and help also immediately uh, with states. For instance, they can do reverse commerce clause uh, effects. Like like this whole thing with uh, the hurricane, and, and um, I watch MSNBC every, every now and then to get a good laugh, because they were saying, oh, how Robbie doesn't like FEMA and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I don't like FEMA either. I've worked with them. And, they, and people who think it's a good idea to have federal government as the emergency response crisis. You really want to argue it should be private, though, and not run by the no, individual no, no, states? No, 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 it should be the states. The states have always been able to their own to their own needs. For I'll give you great examples. During during even Katrina, during Hurricane Ike, we've had states send their emergency vehicles over and we, we coordinated for reach. But I can tell you, FEMA is under the discretion of a federal authority. They don't help if you're one out. You have to meet a certain criteria, and that criteria changes constantly. So that doesn't mean that means that it's not consistent. The the, the funding is weird on how they actually are able to appropriate it. Number two, when FEMA arrives, they have to yield to state jurisdiction anyway, i.e. what happened with Katrina. No, uh, Louisiana did not act fast enough with the state jurisdiction to give FEMA to, uh, the, the green light now, to now, go now, ahead. Now, Ben, and, how many times have I told you the first rule in government spending 
is why spend one dollar when you can spend two for half the value? <laughs> oh yes, are you pointing out that that should be four? Yes, they should be able to be. That should be eight. It shouldn't be a FEMA in that sense. If you want to have reserved money, let's do a reverse commerce clause on that, because that's my that was my point. Do a reverse commerce clause on that. Save all the tax money that you on the millions you're spending in FEMA and allocate it to the state. And say, hey, here is your emergency funding. And hey, you know what? You can make the state say, Yes, we're gonna do our own logistics that helps us because some states will never have a freaking hurricane. So why the hell should we, you know, we worry about all this other kind of stuff? The states are better at addressing what they Because they'll have a drought, or they'll have a tornado, or they'll yeah. have a... God, let me think of... They'll have a volcano! <laughs> That's Hawaii, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm thinking of Washington. Politicians to have common sense. Well, what's wrong with asking politicians to have common sense? Same thing it is to ask regular folks to have common sense. Well, that's true. <laughs> Shit, just well, lacky. Oh, and or forsake any any transfers or tax programs and money that are going from the state to the federal government in the terms of a cut uh, to save the state money so the federal government takes a cut on incoming door. energy concerns and, 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 and that lowering the price of gasoline for instance it could be temporary for instance it's not going to hurt the ewoks up in the damn trees to help serve the government let's say yes it will the e wait no you don't understand the first rule of ewakoness if it doesn't if i can't make a billboard out of it it doesn't help the environment <laughs> I'm just saying that temporarily they could certainly California could certainly say, look, we're gonna we are we're in the red, we need we need more commerce to take place and we're gonna we're gonna we don't have to pay the federal government X amount of dollars through any commerce bond revenues or uh, any anything of that effect and we're gonna take that money and we're gonna and we're gonna suspend certain or lower certain taxes on gasoline and guess what? That's a direct that is a direct consumer effect, just like payroll taxes affects you it's still a dynamic variable everything's dynamic means which means it can, it can have a discriminatory timeline for the effects but usually when money are, is in the pockets of people quicker which is usually those avenues things like affecting commodities well but bush give every taxes. bush yeah. gave everybody 300 bucks and the economy didn't recover come on man this doesn't no, work no, <laughs> after his 2000 uh, he had two sets of tax cuts and it did go up um, but then he started screwing around. See, I was never a Bush 43 fan. After his tax cuts, he pissed me off. But, uh, but uh, the, uh, the the basic deal of it is is that you get a response. And if people spend money, then the company's like, oh, I, I had two employees. I can't keep up with demand. Now i got to hire because people are spending. Well, okay, but there's one thing you're leaving out, which is for the longest time, a good, a good amount of our consumer spending and our economic activity was balanced by people, I'm just going to flat out say it, abusing credit. Not using credit, abu oh, yeah, ab 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 abusing credit. And the reality is, it's going to be 15 to 20 years before the American people are willing to abuse credit again because we have... A bunch of people, and I'd say the majority of people oh, walking around who got bit by yeah. that, they're like, no, no, I want to save, I want to spend the money I have, not mortgage myself to the hill and get bit by it. I don't see that. I don't see that right now. If we had, seriously. Uh, you, you are telling me like, that there are honestly people who would still. There the, are some, but not. I, there are going to be people that go right back to Maxim. But that's that's a that's actually a different variable. That's that. It doesn't, that does not hinder um, direct cash, which is direct income, direct asset, or direct liquidity in exchange for products and services that they'd go out and... and no, and actually what I think is hurting that most is the banking um, cash flow requirements because I don't know... Well, that's but, my point. Well, no, no. 90% of banks right now are basically because their cash reserves are low are instituting mm -hmm. policies which say you got to have a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars in the bank, or we're going to fee you. So well, the money <laughs> supply is actually great right now. The money supply is actually enormous, but banks are not willing to risk. They they're going to take the cheap money and do it elsewhere, and then 
they have to go lucky. But what's happened, and that's part of the um, that's part of the uh, Frank Dodd thing, where everybody thought it was such a great deal. But but in, in, in actuality, really the same restrictions. I didn't that they say banks aren't approved, doing good. I said their liquidity is taxed, which is a different thing. They're not as liquid as they'd like. Yeah. Well, no, there's. They're they're following their own they're following new restriction guidelines because of what got them look the banks were part of the problem too I don't give the banks a pass I don't but, give them a pass either wait, but I'm stating that I'm stating the fact that the banking policies right now because partly because of guidelines partly because of their own incompetence and partly because of um, the current uh, where money currently is the reality is ninety percent of the American people are being told come up with fifteen hundred to three thousand in some cases five thousand dollars of money to take out of the economy sit in the bank and just have it sit there don't spend it don't do anything with it <laughs> and i'm like uh, yeah that's what we need right now everybody that's why i want to bypass the whole i would i mean that would be my best my best thing as a president could do working with congress and because obviously the quantitative easing, you've just proved your, and that's correct. You proved the, the, the point that look, three quantitative easings have done nothing to bring liquidity through the banks and, and, and getting those loans. But what we can do is at least try to get people spending a little bit more because they have more cash in their pockets, and or commodities are costing them less. Things like gasoline, electricity. That's another thing I, that I find in other states. Here in Texas, we have uh, deregulated free competition, but I know other states aren't, aren't as lucky. So they could do reverse commerce clause for some of those uh, energy, uh, just everyday things that people expect to pay as bills that, that puts more money in their pocket by paying less, that it has a direct consequence of saying, well, wow, I have maybe for the, even the holiday season, uh, you could, and that's the whole point when, when Bush did a rebate, he wanted retroactive. So that's why everybody got a rebate. He's like, no, 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 no. These tax cuts started you know, back in January, even though it's April right now, we're gonna give, Everybody, the money they would would have received had this been running since January. I had no problem with that. What, what, you know, whether uh, a Democrat does it or not, that hey, that's great. You, you invoke a policy, you say it should have started on this day, do a, um, a retroactive rebate. Fine, who cares? That's great. Okay, so that was your policy, and I think that you put you, that just well, it, what, there's no guarantees in anything, but I think what we have been doing has obviously been working. So I, the only alternative to what we really haven't been touched upon is putting money directly back into consumers' pockets. And, I, and, and honestly, bit, I don't think they'll spend it. I think what they'll do with it is put it in you the bank they, to get rid of the bank fee. If they want to save the money, saving the money, actually then, at that point, makes that money in a bank more dynamic for loading out versus the quantitative easing, which is actually an act, is, it is liquidity tied back to a government exchange program that they've either swapped more toxic assets I was laughing at quantitative easing here on the third one. I was like, look, you've already done uh, yields to bonds and trying because that's where the banks went was uh, the yields. So they started flooding that out to make those unattractive to try to, to get them to go out. The first one was toxic assets and now we're back to the third one, which is reacquiring more toxic assets. This is ridiculous on, on a swap of, it, it, it's, it, it's making cheap money that people don't care. I'm not worried about exchange rates, so don't get me onto that. I'm not really worried about what the dollar is worth abroad because they're just deeper down the toilet as it's flushing as we are. So the um, you should be worried about that a little bit because there is a there are two well, growing the, markets I, that are moving not, back. I don't want to get the impression I'm not worried about that. What I'm saying is it's not priority one yet. I mean, you know, it, uh, I know we can't like, wait for it spending. to be priority one because so, if the barter markets really do take off, like a lot of people are afraid of, the dollar is in a very vulnerable position. Versus other currencies, I don't know. But the 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 thing of it is, is that once once spending occurs, I guarantee you, the money supply has to shrink at that point because they'll they'll you you're going you want to avoid a deflationary. It depends. Well, it depends on, on, on certain circumstances. But the more people are spending and hiring, then the money, the money supply should then do the inverse and start contracting, which I would expect the Federal Reserve to do if they were. And, and on honestly, I wouldn't. I would because I would expect the. Ex I agree with you, but I would expect the exact opposite reaction given how things are right now. I, I'm just look. You ask for ideas. You know, 
I like to actually have a conversation versus the politicians of today, which is doing nothing more than sound bites. I, I find it kind of sad that both camps are just, they're, and, and you know what, it's not their fault. The people of the, of the United States don't want to hear it. It's no. like nobody wants to sit down and actually let's let's do get into details. No, no, let's, no. Let's this is the bit. This is where I say it doesn't matter who gets elected. We're going to have four more years of bullshit. No, it doesn't, because it doesn't matter. because the answer the American people want is it's all going to be magically okay. No, well, I, I would say there's a lot, but no, I, it, it is not going to be the same. For instance, if Romney were to get if Romney were to get voted now, I now here's what I'm going to say to those that are on on the left side. I hope he doesn't invoke strict uh, social programs. I'm not interested in the social side of things. I'm interested in let's get let's get um, economic sense on. And I think no, 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 no. He'll just issue a free pregnancy for everyone. No, <laughs> for sure. I think he could. He, I think he should gut Obamacare, but I don't think that he should. You should. In other words, the act needs to be amended. Okay, we need to get this whole idea oriented in the direction, which I, we talked about last show, single payer, and everybody has insurance and all that, because I think that just, to, I, I mean, if I were on stage up there, I'd say the idea of insurance, uh, if everyone being covered, if everybody, the words, and then what, what they should say is that everybody should be able to have access, not everybody should be insured. That, to me, is the most atrocious thing to say because you're talking about artificial pricing and that you're giving all the power, both Republicans and Democrats, to the insurance companies mm -hmm. when, when health care should be a commodity and, and as consumer savvy as going okay. to the Okay, that, that, that sounds good in an economics classroom, but the American people don't want to hear, what do you mean I have to pay $5? If she, <laughs> I'm entitled. This is my right. <laughs> no, there are people that do feel entitlement, but I guarantee you that if if things become cheap enough, and it will, it's a struggle, uh, of, of course, but that, it is atrocious to say, well, look, you're going to have to pay even more out of your, because they don't see it, but it comes out of their paychecks regardless, with, with, which the corporation's paying on behalf of the health care, you know, it, it costs them a pretty penny, and I guarantee if their paychecks increase, because they no longer have to pay as much for insurance, let's just say that we write the insurance. Well, okay, but, but I could make the same argument with everybody who pays for Social Security and goes, do you know what I could do with that freaking money they take out to fund my Social Security that I'm never going to see? It, it, it's not, but for the majority... Yeah, it, I miss, you know, here's this. I'm one, though, that you can't change a program overnight. And that's what I think made the most sense about uh, what Romney wanted to do. And it's true, Obamacare radically does change. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid practices, and Medicaid is actually going to get hurt now because the Supreme Court did not uphold the Commerce Clause aspect of it. Sure, Obama no, 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 but you haven't been paying attention to the political lads. Mitt Romney is going to kill Medicare. Obama saved it. Didn't you hear that? Right. <laughs> you have not been paying attention to the attack ads. <laughs> Truthfully, Romney is going to maintain the existing. There's not now. The problem is the program is not is it is it's not a good program. But the thing of it is, is we can't play games with people that paid into the system and have a certain expectation. Any politician, whether the Democrat or Republican, I think that that you you invoke your new plan at a certain cutoff, and then say, okay, you who have at a where, where they actually have no means of counter counter producing or finding other other streams of income that uh, to. Uh, alleviate or have as a hedge against. Oh, oh, assets. oh, okay. I, I, in, in theory, everybody agrees with that, but in practice, I'm going to tell you what the thing is. And I have had this conversation with people over Social Security, Medicare, and even the idea of, even if they don't like Obamacare, the idea of Obamacare being that's not. And the reality is, you can have this conversation in the metaphorical, philosophical sense of, well, it's a good idea to draw a line in the sand and let the people who can take care of themselves take care of themselves, and the people who are too far in to, to change tracks at this point, make sure they're taken <laughs> care of. Okay. However, the, uh, that argument breaks down the moment they realize, no, 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 I belong on the other side of the line. <laughs> well, <laughs> now wait a minute. Okay, there are going to be a few of them, but that, that's... If, if, <laughs> But yeah, that's 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 that's, 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 that's like ninety percent of the American people. They're like, no, 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 I'm too far in. For instance, I would draw the line. I would draw the line at people 
if you're in your 40s, you use the existing plan, and it's going to be paid for for you to retire. Anybody below four, because if you start making it like 50 or whatever, they you, those years start getting cut off quickly. You start worrying about employment, you know, and um, you need a lot of other interdependent interdependent variables to come into play, like reducing the role of it. Now, let me talk about what I'm saying about insurance. When I mean by reducing the role of insurance, today's insurance controls prices, and they argue with the doctors, hospitals, and what have you. So the, the problem is that we have to stop that argument. Insurance does not need to be in the business of price control. Insurance needs to actually be like the old days where the first insurance was you paid. Uh, now, I don't want to say it should be like this. I'm just saying that. I, let me let me backtrack a little bit. I'm insurance to be exactly what it was. I'm trying to say that the role of insurance needs to get the hell out of price control. And what it used to be is that if you were unemployed, or not unemployed, or lost days off of work from an injury or being sick, you used to have uh, it was an insurance that was um, I forget what it was called, some sort of. Uh, um, Oh, I used to know it. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't remember that. There was a specific name for it. But what it, what it would do is it just give you money that you lost off of, off, of, off of your job because you were sick. Because it was health-related, they paid the hours you lost. And that's what that insurance did. Well, then, no, that's okay because we have, a, we have a lobby who's pushing to make that part of federal minimum wage. <laughs> well, uh, but I'm just saying that's the way it used to be. And you still paid because medicine, the medicine was at a price level. Now, it's true. Medicine has an inherent price increase because you didn't have MRIs back then. You didn't have the types of antibiotics and things that do have higher fixed costs of treatment than we did back then. Granted, but we're at a, such a, an atrocious rate of climb because of price controls and frivolous regulations that this is, is ridiculous. I think insurance should play a gap role. And what I mean by gap is that is that we get at least what, 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 what do you mean, Bit? We, there are no frivolous regulations. You know, we have to make sure that a fetus can't buy a handgun. <laughs> That's not frivolous at all. Come keep on, up. keep up. <laughs> so, but my point is that of gap insurance is that there, there are in times, if there's the new cutting edge thing, and, Co and, and Commodore here has, has, a, has a unique sickness or even a sickness that now is on the verge of being treated successfully. But the costs are high. Well, he preventive preventive medicine. Lee, he's able to to. It's so cheap in preventive medicine. He's been fine and all sort of stuff. Even in some sorts of hospitalization, not a big deal. Um, and we're talking about here. Yeah, I'm just using it as a hypothetical. Oh, okay. But, uh, uh, special uh, do, do, do you mean uh, something like basically giving someone an inhaler versus making them go to the ER for an attack? Well, no, what, 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 what would happen is we don't want to deny Commodore that new and innovative treatment. So that's when the insurance comes from where his income to pay out to the normal cash flows of health care, which, which, you know, is not that, is not that really unrealistic, meets where he can no longer cover and it's unrealistic for him to pay for that treatment. That insurance steps in and says, we're filling the gap, okay? Not price control. But we fill in the gap for, for, for services for him. And I guarantee you insurance companies are more interested in that because fewer people get treated for things like that that need gap services. So they're going to be making money because a lot of people don't need, won't be really utilizing it as much as they are now, which is why insurance companies are involved in price control. And neither Republican or Democrats are talking about how to make health care cheaper. Affecting insurance or forcing insurance to get involved in, in saying everybody needs to be covered and not and not worry about pre-existing conditions does nothing to the price. You have to choose. Canadians. <laughs> well, but, but Mr. No. Bit, I would argue the majority of the consumer, um, at least initially, doesn't care as long as they're not paying for it. Because the reality is, I, I guarantee you, eighty. I know that I know they are. But here's the thing. 80% plus of the American people do not realize that they are paying for it in the forms of taxes or devaluation of their currency. In some form, they are paying for it. Rather, they're looking here for the police. They don't even know about it. But, you know? but yeah, it, it, the reality is that's not the mentality of the American people. I don't oh, know if they know weren't educated they in grade school, yeah. if they don't know how to do basic math. Well, see, what you're talking about, I, I'm not going to disagree. 
but those type of types of things, while they exist, um, exist temporarily because we have already had policy shifts that have changed behaviors, and it's not like the behaviors won't change again. But can't change. but that's the key thing. Those policy shifts are not going to catch up where they're here for the majority of the American people where they're staring them in the face where they can't look the other way or not well, notice the them until they're already bit in the ass by them. Right okay, now, they don't see them. No, but well, let's be honest. If you're, if you're somebody 40 years and up, we don't, we're not going to dick with it. I, that, that would be unfair. You're, you, you, you've lived and worked most of your productive life. A bit. Just out of curiosity, how old are you? 37. Okay, I'm making sure because it's... I know you're around that age, but not so. You're, you're still putting yourself on the screw yourself side of the line. I am. Okay, I am. good. I am. That's what I was checking because it's like I, I have more productive years, though. I mean, the thing <laughs> of it is that we are working longer. I mean, my mother, I don't know. God, she's probably going to work till she's <laughs> She's in her 70s and she's still working. Let's just put it that way. Um, um, what's his name? Um, the, the guy that first went faster than the speed of sound. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, the guy who did the skydiving? No, the, the guy that first broke. The, the guy who pl who flew the X, the the X plane, guy, what it was. He actually broke the speed of sound again, just recently, and he's yeah. still working as an yeah, animal. You know what? And that's the see, that's, that's the beauty. That's the full circle. You know, that's 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 the completion of the circle. The healthcare is making us live, live longer, which gives us more productive years. Yeah, he makes, next year and which makes it advantageous for all to say, hey, you're in your 40s now, so, you, you know, the, the guys like me, 37, almost 40, we have a lot of productive years ahead of us. You know, in your 40s, I don't want to cut you off. You know, you, you, you have worked a lot, and as medicine increases, life expectancy and the, way, and, and the longer we're living will continue to play a role. Yeah, well, I have a question, though. Is that Sorry. trend still true? I know it's true for the baby yeah, boomers, but is it true true. For, is it true as a whole of average for our generation that came after? Uh, last I checked, which was, I haven't seen anything for the 2000s. The la the late, you said the 80s, and the last one I saw was late 90s, like 98. Yeah, well, because the reason I'm asking is because we have to acknowledge there's a large percent of the American populace whose health is not what it could be. Well, yeah, it's that, that, that what could be is, is certainly better than what it would be. Uh, had certain. You know about stuff like asbestos and stuff like that. You know? No, no, I'm referring more to. Um, I mean, we've 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 readjusted several health standards. Uh, we've done other things. It, it, the reality is there have been talk about that the generation in flux right now, the generation after the baby boomers or the one after them, may be the first generation to die quicker than the one that came before because mm -hmm. of the deterioration in overall average health. Huh, I haven't heard that. It, yeah, it, it basically, it, it, well, and it, it's one of the things that was at the heart of the whole healthcare debate, you know, we have to make sure our children are fit because we're allowing them to destroy their bodies before they're adults. Well, Obesity, you mean? Uh, no, it's it's not just that. I mean, it's it, it's. Uh, I mean, one flavor is obesity. One flavor is um, diabetes too. Because yeah, it's, it's diabetes you know, and the things that can trigger type two, overdoing of salts, over sun. It's just general well, hey, ill health. I, I give I do give Michelle Obama credit for attempting to destroy the food pyramid. That thing is to be destroyed. Oh, they've wanted that thing destroyed since we were kids because it, well, it misrepresented. Well, in the 1970s, and there were a bunch of freaking uh, uh, vegan, vegetarian guys that, you know, it, we, God, we created a whole generation of, of, uh, of, of type 2 and uh, other forms of diabetes from too much damn uh, sugars being produced and too much grains being consumed. I know, but again, it, that, that's what I'm referring to. It, the reality is we've let it, we've let it get out of whack. Mm. It, 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 I mean, you can't, I, I, I'm not talking about obesity, I'm just talking about general overall health. The reality mm. is we have, we have a, a large percentage of the populace that are more susceptible than their parents and their grandparents were to like diabetes, that cardiovascular true, things, other things, which are things that can kill you fairly young, pr proportionally speaking. Our parents didn't have, in terms of treatment, and like 
For one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't also say about why U.S. healthcare is also high, but it, it's, it is high, and I agree with them for a level that it is it needs to be. But we have more outpatient types of care and variable choices known to man in this country really than anywhere else. Um, a lot of other, other countries that people like to praise your healthcare usually funnel down choices so that they can regiment and regiment and budget and regulate all that other stuff to try to, to try to address efficiency. We have tons and tons of outpatient services. Uh, that God, you can just choose whatever the hell you want. You know, one of these days I would love to get you and one of my um, roommates here in a conversation, but it's never going to happen at this hour of the night because they work in the health industry and as and and you jumped on it as hot and reality is in a lot of this areas. I'm a little ignorant. I can well, look see, at I'm the a, statistics I'm but not ignorant. fully understand them. <laughs> In the health industry, the health industry has been my my biggest programming field. Working with doctors, yeah. 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 So, shall we get to tech since we probably put everybody else to sleep? Yeah. Before we do that, let me put a uh, stop mark in, so we can go on a full pardon, not stop. <laughs> okay. On to tech.